Graph kernels. What are graph kernels and how are they related to graph neural networks? Now, graphs are the structure for representing data in bioinformatics, chemoinformatics, and social network and a complexity of sensor networks. And therefore, the abundance of graph structure data, we need to perform some machine learning task on this kind of data, which led to the development of graph kernels. In machine learning, a graph kernel is a kernel function that computes an inner product on graphs. This means graph kernels can be understood as function measuring the similarity of pairs of graphs. An operator theory, that is a branch of mathematics, a positive definite kernel is a generalization of a positive definite function or easier of a positive definite matrix. What is this? A symmetric matrix M with real entries is positive definite if the real number Z transpose M Z is positive for each and every non-zero real column vector Z where Z T is the transpose of C. Or if you want it a little bit more general, a Hermitian matrix, this means a complex matrix equal to its conjugate transpose, is positive definite if the real number Z star MZ is positive for every non-zero complex column vector Z, where Z star denotes the conjugate transpose of Z. A matrix is positive definite in short terms if and only if it defines an inner product. Now this is interesting. A matrix is positive definitive if and only if it defines an inner product. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now an inner product space, or as you might call it sometimes a host of pre-Hilbert space, is a real vector space or a complex vector space with an operation called an inner product. An inner product is defined in this space. And an inner product naturally induces an associated norm. So every, so every inner product space is also a normed vector space. And here we are. This is what we have been looking for. A normed vector space where we can do our mathematical operations that we are familiar with in machine learning. Next step. The graph kernels allow kernelized learning algorithms such as support vector machines and I had a specific video on kernels in support vector machines to work directly on graphs and this is it. The graph kernels work directly on graphs without any other transformation, without having to do a feature extraction to transform them to fixed length real value feature vectors. Graph kernels work directly on graphs. This is the beauty. Now two examples. One, uh, one example of a kernel between graphs is the random walk kernel, which conceptually performs random walks on two graphs simultaneously, then counts the number of paths that were produced by both walks. Now this is equivalent to doing random walk on the direct product of the pair of graphs. Another example is the weissfeiler lehmann graph kernel, which computes multiple rounds of weissfeiler lehmann algorithm and computes the similarity of two graphs as the inner product of the histogram vectors of both graphs. In my last video, I showed you the weissfeiler lehmann test as a test for graph isomorphism and if you want, this is a direct application. And in those weissfeiler lehmann histogram vectors, the kernel collects the number of times a color occurs in the graph in every iteration. So for two isomorphic graphs, the kernel returns a maximum similarity since the two feature vectors are identical. Now, you will notice or you will read sometimes uh, our convolution framework. And an R convolution framework is nothing mysterious, but it simply decomposes structured objects 
into substructures, simpler substructures to compute local similarities that are then again aggregated. Now those R convolution corners on graphs have limitations. The simplicity of the way in which the similarities between substructures are aggregated limit the ability to capture complex characteristic of the graph. Okay, next point. There's a, a nice publication, and I will leave you the link in the description of this video, from Kriege, which employs a Weisfeiler Lehmann based color refinement scheme and uses an optimal assignment of the nodes to compute the Weisfeiler Lehmann kernel. The problem with this is that it does not generalize to graphs with higher dimensional, and not important part, continuous node attributes. Now, if you think this is it, no, there was a, even in 2019, 2020, a famous article, I will also leave you the link to the, to the archive preprint, and it was called the Wasserstein Weisfeiler Lehmann Graph Kernels. Now, this is an interesting combination because a Weisfeiler Lehmann inspired embedding scheme for graphs with a continuous node attributes and weighted edges was enhanced with a computed Wasserstein distance. Now, Wasserstein distance, if you're not familiar with it, is a very interesting topic in itself, but let me just tell you the, the simplest explanation I found is a distance function. It is kind of a distant function between probability distribution defined on a given metric space. And if you want to find out the way to go from a Wasserstein distance, where you, where you have, you know, the term probability mass, maybe, to a Wasserstein kernel, there is a pseudocode algorithm to compute the Wasserstein graph kernel. You have an input of two graph and a graph embedding scheme and a ground distance. And, and this is another limitation if you want to have a ground distance. You have a prefix within your algorithm. And the output then is to generate the node embeddings to compute the ground distance between each pair of nodes and then compute the Wasserstein distance. But I will leave you to a link to the original description. Uh, uh, to the original paper, the original preprint of archive in the description of this video, so you can write, dive deep into this. So, and here we are more or less at the summation, what we learned. We have graph kernels, and we found the two limitations of the graph kernels. They cannot effectively handle graphs whose vertices are annotated with continuous multidimensional attributes. And there's another limitation, the data representation itself and the learning are independent from each other. And now the graph neural network, and you can say somehow 2016, 2017, they set out to address some of the major limitations of the graph kernels. And the graph neural network in the simplest form is a neural network architecture that operates also on graphs, a data structure which have a graph structure. So, very successful branch, currently ongoing research, and if you want to have a look at it, I did a video on the message passing framework on the message passing neural network, developed in 2017. Have a look at it if you want to have a deep dive or any others of my short YouTube videos I did on current graph neural network research and development. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you in the next one.